All right, good evening. My name is uh, Daryl Q. Slade, and I am the founder and CEO of Ground Up Distribution. Um, I'm the author of The Alarm Clock and Book of Rhymes, um, and I co-authored 1975, A Tale of Two Cities, which is on the uh, market now uh, through our publishing company, No More Suits. Um, what we got on here today, we uh, I have my good friend with me, uh, Gary Nelson, and pretty much we just wanted to put together an informational to kind of talk about the trucking industry from a millennial perspective um, and how it's an industry that um, our people can get into um, and invest in. I got into trucking about four years ago um, from a dispatch perspective. And um, honestly, when I first got in, I, I wanted to help my father grow his business. That was my initial reason, um, his trucking business, because they had been in trucking for a long time. Um, and with me going to Western Southern State, I kind of wanted to infuse what I was learning from the university into that industry. And so um, I took that ambition that I had from um, being at an HBCU, Historically Black College and University, um, and then used that into that operation. And when I learned how the industry worked, um, the industry was actually able to help me pay for my books because I'm a self-published author. Um, and so seeing that and being a part of that even to this day uh, it just kind of speaks to how we can use this industry to be like a uh, a bank if you will to to fund our um, endeavors whatever it may be whether it be a t-shirt company whether you write books whether you rap um, whatever you do it's a lot of you know uh, opportunity in this industry and that's why I wanted to um, bring my brother Gary on because we have a lot of conversations, um, you know, around these topics about uh, transportation, about real estate, uh, the foreign exchange market, um, and how our economy is kind of evolving um, through this pandemic. You know, they said that the the stock market dropped um, in 2020 lower than what it was in the, during the Great Depression. Um, so that's an indicator that a lot of people was impacted by this industry, I mean, by that, you know, pandemic. However, uh, in trucking, it kind of uh, raised flags to like, wow, this is an industry like nobody really thinks about, but if you pay attention to it, you know what I'm saying? It, it actually is a recession proof industry. Um, and if we go back and study what the transportation industry was like during the Great Depression, I'm pretty sure their numbers were, you know, pretty average and it didn't really get impacted much. So that's very important for our people um, to understand. So uh, before we get started um, into our conversation, uh, Gary, I would like for you to come up and uh, just kind of talk about what you've been doing through the pandemic. Um, talk about your background, uh, what led you to becoming an entrepreneur and all that good stuff. Okay. Uh, as you said, I'm Gary Nelson. Um, I am the owner of Legacy X LLC. Um, Legacy X is a company that advocates for small businesses as well as give them opportunity to um, grow through pop-up shops, through informational conferences and all across the board. Uh, I also am the host of the Art of Hustle podcast uh, where we actually interview small businesses um, to get them to come on and tell their story, um, drop gems and also just show people how to get in the industry that they're in. Um, my entrepreneurship journey started March, 2019. Um, I started like, this is my third name for the same company. I started as Legal Money Cartel. Um, still have the same vision for it. Um, but when I started it, it, I can say like, I had a lot of 
road bumps and um, different experiences in the entrepreneurship industry. Um, but over the pandemic, what I did was I kind of tapped into things that I know that I knew that um, businesses would need to, to actually build a solid foundation for um, a small business. So I tapped into business credit. I tapped into personal credit. I tapped into taxes um, and just a whole bunch of various things that I, I just knew um, I would need someone to tell me before I got into business. So um, what I do now is I just use my social media platform as well as um, different. Well, I'm now tapping into different media platforms for um, me to get the information across to entrepreneurs and people who actually want to start in that space. Um, I believe that 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 kind of sums up what I do. I do a lot of other various things as so as a sole proprietor um, and things like that. But overall, I just I just love to advocate um, information to small businesses as well as folks who want to start in like that lane, but don't really know how to get started. They just, you know, need a little push or need some knowledge from someone who's been learning since day one. Um, that sums it up though. Most definitely, most definitely. Um, and I appreciate you being on here um, again, like uh, your knowledge base, your, the way you um, articulate conversations, that's, that's really what I really wanted for the audience, you know, I wanted them to, to hear that, you know, because I just want to kind of have a, a analytical conversation about about this industry. What's your thoughts on this on the industry and like questions that you feel like uh, most common people would ask about this industry? And, uh, you know, I'm open to having that that dialogue um, during this this informational. And then after that, I can kind of talk about what ground up is doing for those solutions uh, to the questions and things like that. So. Okay. Um, so just questions I may have, uh, as you know, from our uh, conversations that I'm kind of looking at different lanes that I can get in, um, in the transportation industry, as we may know, I feel like some people believe that it's, it's like two options. Either you go box or you go semi, but right. it's, a, it's, it's smaller things that you can get into. Um, and it's, it's other lanes that you can get into like hot shot. Um, I just found one. It was the, I cannot think of the name right now, but I know it'll come to me, but just different. If you could just break down the different ways that people could get into the transportation industry um, starting from the lowest cost all the way up into the highest. Okay, cool. I'm glad you said that um, price wise. I never really looked at it that way, but that that is a great question. Um, a great way to look at it because the lowest price will be a dispatcher. Like when I graduated and that's what I do, that's what I train and um, that's what we have um, on our team. That's what ground up represents as the dispatcher uh, but anybody can be a dispatcher and anybody can start a dispatching company and the only startup cost really that you would need is uh paying for to ed the education to really understand really the driver more than anything um and being able to talk the driver's language so paying for a course uh paying for your know, llc costs uh, whether you go through somebody or do it yourself. Um, and that's, that's, that's really it. And paying for the low board, which ranges from like, you know, some were like $30 and the most you pay is like, maybe like a hundred, 250, you know, if you're using debt or power debt. Um, and so that's low, um, low cost. You, you looking at like $2,500 if you want to do it the right way um, for for dispatching. And you can leverage that, you know, dispatchers, depending on how many trucks you run in, uh, let's say you run in five trucks, you'll probably make about four racks a week, you know, active, that's active income, you know, not passive, unless you set it up that way. 
if you if you passivate that, you know, it'll probably be you split that in half. You say twenty five hundred passive income, but if it's active, it's five grand. You know what I'm saying? That's just the general number. If you play your cards right and you get five trucks, um, and then the broker, I really like the broker. Uh, the broker is like the top of the chart with low um, startup, no uh, overhead. Because the broker is the one that's just saying, okay, well, we're with uh, Duke Energy um, and we have these uh, these lights that we have to ship across the country, these light bulbs, right? And, you know, as the broker, they're talking to you. They know you don't have the truck. They know you're not driving the truck, but they know that you have truck drivers, you know, who work for your company. Um, and so that's essentially how you're doing is you just getting the contract and you assigning it to people who already have their, um, legally it's called a carrier, um, who has their carrier, motor carrier, uh, their DOT, their MC number, et cetera. Um, and so that trickles down into a carrier. The carrier is probably going to be the most startup because you actually have to pay for the fleet. You have to pay for your IFTA stickers. You have to pay for your insurance, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you starting off and like, say you want to get a hot shot and we could talk a little bit more about hot shots, but say you want to get a hot shot, you all you would have to do is go get um, the right flatbed. And I wish I had um, my guy Brian on because he's actually working with hot shot guys now. So he could tell you the exact size trailer you would need um, or flatbed trailer that you would need um, the right truck to get. And so with that, I would estimate you need about $150,000. Uh, and that can be borrowed money um, to get started off on that on that end um same thing and that's in the same ballpark as a tractor trailer um because you know they run you can go to an auction and get you know a freight liner for 10 bands at an auction you know what i'm saying um so 150 to be safe because gary what a lot of people don't realize is that this is a high maintenance risk industry so when you run in them trucks you know, it's good to have everything, you know, starting off, but you have to have SS capital, a line of credit, um, a pool, some, an investment pool to where if that truck break down, you know what I'm saying? You have backup, you know what I mean? You have cash flow in the, in the back, you know, in that emergency account to pay for that truck to get it fixed and, and get it back rolling because the money going to turn right back around once you get back on the road. So um those are like the the general um positions that's in the industry you know um and like you said from from lowest cost to highest cost so um to sum that up you can literally start off as a dispatcher like just say if you you know I, you know we talk to the youth just say if it's a, a kid that's 16 years old he won't be able to really operate a truck until he's 21 legally. However, he can learn the industry by dispatching up until that time where he's 21. And he can use the money from dispatching to invest into his equipment. You see what I'm saying? And so um, that's, that's a strategy, you know, or it could be vice versa. It could be somebody who's been driving trucks you know, and ready to retire and need a breadwinner in the industry that they're familiar with uh, to fall back on once they, you know, hang it up. So um, I hope that that covered your question. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, um, you, so you said um, from the start dispatcher, broker, um, dispatcher, broker, box truck, then you went over a uh, tractor trailer and then a hot shot, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So like, um, let me think of another question. So, 
So br- could you break down like your your experience as um, a dispatcher broker? Um, just give us like an insight on on from your standpoint and how you feel the industry is going um, within the next five years, basically. Okay. Um, th- thank you for that question. Um, I really love being a dispatcher um, from a career standpoint. You know, we talking like we both alums from Winston and you know that whole thing about finding the right job and, um, you know, making sure it's something that can kind of fit your DNA, what you, you know, what you used to, what you, um, what, what match your swag, you know what I mean? And that don't compromise your swag. And uh, for me, dispatching is just that because it's kind of like I created the position it's like playing my player on 2K. You know, you create the the path you want to go down. And like uh, Napoleon Hill talks about imagination. And this is a position to where it's like, you can make this whatever you want to make it. And so like I created a whole company off of my action, what I was already acting on, I just went ahead and incorporated the business around that action because now I can duplicate myself and put other people in the position to do what I'm doing. And like, you know, we both hustlers. So it allows me to hustle and talk how I talk, you know, how, how business should be taught. It's not like trying to win somebody over or trying to do a presentation for somebody to, for them to understand the product. They, as soon as you call them, they ready to get straight to the point. You know, you got Front Royal, Virginia to Charleston, South Carolina. Let me get that, that it's on the way, you know what I'm saying? And so um, from a, hustler like it it just makes everything go smooth because I literally like um I was talking to one of my homies earlier you know it's like a five minute shift you clock in for five minutes you do what you got to do and you peel back out you know what I'm saying so that's that's my experience so I I just started just from working in my community like my guy Pete, um, he, me and him started out he, when I came back from Columbus, Ohio. He was at the house trying to figure out what his next hustle was going to be. And Pete got a lot of hustles. He done drove with multiple companies. Um, you know, he uh, did uh, painting, you know, he paint houses. He used to paint on Western State, all types of stuff. But at the time, he was just, you know, finding something else that bet that best fit his hustle, you know. And the same thing was for me. And I got plugged in with some sisters in Charlotte about the low board. And they actually were alums too, uh, Miss Bridget Taylor. And the people at her networking event turned me on to the low board. And when I found it, it was like I discovered gold. You know, I was able to click in and see large numbers like 1900, 3200. I'm like, oh, wow. Like, I didn't know what I was looking at at first. You know what I mean? Um, But I understood it. And I just, um, I sent, you know, I caught on Texas Pete. I sent him to Texas for his first trip. And we've been running, you know, every since, legit since 2018. Um, So that's my experience. So 2018 that was three years ago so we'll do it on a three-year metric in this next three years I see an increase um you know ground up distribution we segue the market in 2020 to become a broker and it's a process to become a broker and I wanted to take that risk to take that process to get all the necessary 
um, steps that I need to become a broker because um, there, this is a cutthroat industry, you know, um, mm -hmm. and you deal with brokers who um, don't have a respect or tolerance for the driver and they just want to get their Louis. Um, and so I see a lot of <laughs> corrections um, coming up in the future. I see, um, and, and once that happens, it's going to be more of our people who can be in that position to, um, you know, kind of um, work with the drivers and understand the drivers and give drivers, you know, better rates than, you know, what they what they have right now. Um, but the rates are really good. And, and that's another thing um, because what's happening is you have big time companies and, you know, in college, you learn a term called purchasing power. So these big time companies have a lot of purchasing power. That's how a lot of this freight is able yeah. to move. Uh -huh. um, so like, for example, in, um, and if you can, if you're just coming in, uh, make sure you mute your mic. Um, for example, it's a company up in New York, Peekskill, New York. Um, they have, they're called Popcorners. And Popcorners, um, their biggest customer is Natural Foods out of Pennsylvania. And so Natural Foods has an umbrella of companies under them, like Host Food, Publix, Earth Air, you name it, all of those, you know, healthy lifestyle companies. So all popcorners got to do is put the popcorn in the microwave, if you will, and pop the popcorn. And then, you know, Natural Foods is going to be able to make that purchase because we go to these grocery stores every day. So it really falls back on the people. Um, and so as a broker, you can work directly with a, a popcorners to, to handle their freight, to get their freight from their warehouse up in New York to their warehouse, I mean, to the Natural Foods Distribution Center in Pennsylvania. So um, that's kind of where I see it going in the future. I see um, also, it's a lot of people who's getting into the industry um, who like don't even realize they getting into the industry. Like a lot of products are coming out. You know, me, I got books. I didn't realize I was in distribution when I was writing books, you know what I'm saying? Um, but now as I see um, people being kind of like LeBron and throwing alleys, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, look, you got this product, let's get that into a distribution channel. And what that's going to do for, for the culture. Um, so that's kind of where, where I see um, the industry going um, here in the, in the near future and, and kind of how I got you know, started in the, in the game. Okay, that's facts. Um, <clears throat> I think just just from that, I think my next question would be, like, how if you if you were getting into the industry, like, how do you do your due diligence of research and you know what I'm saying making sure that you go into the trucking game with with everything right, like with everything registered and making sure your truck good. Like, how how do you do that? The, the first thing is you want to have a team. You, you have to have a team um, because if you go out and you get a truck and you get a trailer and you get a driver or you are the driver and you don't have somebody doing your paperwork, how you expect to get paid? You know what I'm saying? And if you don't have somebody to help you find loads, how do you ex um, expect to get work? So, um, the, the key to life, you know, is putting your people on and putting people in position. And so like, um, really anybody can come into the, the industry. And if you have a solid team, a dedicated team, like, okay, I need, it's like, it's like football. I need you to play 
you know, the back, I need, I'm going to be the quarterback. I need you to play the wide out. You know what I'm saying? I need you to run the slot. You feel me? And this is how we're going to run our offense. You know, no football team is going to get on the field if they just got the quarterback out there. You feel what I'm saying? So the biggest thing is understanding the different roles that you need around you in order for this thing to operate. Um, because the volume is there, the cash flow is there. You're able to pay your people. And then um, like a lot of brokers, like speaking from a carrier side, like if you do own a your fleet, a lot of brokers pay like 30 days out, some are like net 60. Um, so they have what's called a factoring company. Uh, and I use England Logistics, you know, shout them out. Um, and they're really good with uh, they real anal. When I say anal, they like they look at every little detail because they got to make sure that all the paperwork is correct. Because what they're doing is they're billing the broker on the back end um, and paying you up front. So if they if the broker don't pay for 60 days, the factoring company will come in and say, well, we'll pay you up front if everything is accurate. Um, so they have portals where you can submit your paperwork, your invoice, your bill of laying, all that good stuff. Um, so you need, that's what you call an accounts um, receivable. You know what I'm saying? So with your accounts receivable, you have somebody who knows how to submit those bills. So that's like an HR rep. So you're going to need an HR rep on, on, on the squad. You're going to need a dispatcher on the squad. The dispatcher is going to be your quarterback. That's who's going to be like, uh, okay, um, you got the driver, this driver like running in the Southwest. Okay, we gonna, we, I'm about to send you to Atlanta. You coming out of Carolina, I'm going to send you to Atlanta. Out of Atlanta, I'm going to send you to Houston. Out of Houston, we're going to go to Phoenix. We're going to run back. If you, got, if you can run in California, we're going to run up to LA. We're going to shoot back. We're going to come to Texas, come back to Texas, and come back to Carolina. That's probably like a 20 band trip if you run it the right way. You feel what I'm saying? So you need a breadwinner in the dispatcher position, somebody that's tough. You feel what I'm saying? Somebody who's really built for this life. You know, that's where you need as a dispatcher because you're nine times out of 10, your driver tough. You know what I'm saying? And if, you know, if the driver is stepping all over the dispatcher, then we got a problem. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, you need somebody like that on your team. And this is, like I said, I'm speaking for people who's looking to invest into a truck. Um, and the biggest thing that you need is an MC and a DOT number. Cause that's like your, that's like your social security for your truck. You feel me? They're able to pull up everything. If you've been in wrecks, if you late, if you um, overweight, um, everything, you know what I'm saying? Is on that DOT. So you got to make sure if you work under somebody else's DOT that you check their CSA score um, and understand what to look for um, with their company to see what their track record is, because that's going to impact you. You feel me? Um, and so if you get your own, you want to make sure you know the people who you bring in on. You feel what I'm saying? Because you don't want somebody to come in and just sabotage it for everybody, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's like, if one go down, they all go down, you know? So um, that's very important to look at. Uh, and then also the last thing, the most important thing, Gary, is having a vision. Knowing like, don't look at it from a dot, like a dollar amount. The money's there, you know what I'm saying? But what's your vision? What's your why? Why Why do I want to do this? You know what I'm saying? You have to ask yourself that before you, you get started in that. So that's what I would say on that. Um, yeah, that's a good way. That you, That's a good, like, analogy that you used. Um, what well, is there anything else that you wanted to touch on or um, you wanted the listeners to know about the trucking industry or about the conference anything yeah um i appreciate everybody tapping in um that's that's pretty much it uh again if you just tapping in you know we just wanted to go over some brief questions and if y'all have any questions uh 
feel free to to ask them and we get those answered. We just wanted to kind of uh, go over some generic questions that's been asked um, in the industry. Um, and, you know, we wanted to, uh, well, I was looking to uh, promote our, our conference that's going to be coming up here in, in Knoxville um, because we're not only just talking about this industry and, you know, making suggestions, but we also have a blueprint um, that we're going to be presenting in Knoxville um, about where this industry is really about to go and what it can do for you. Um, you know, transportation, as we talked about earlier on the call, it's not going anywhere. Um, you know, we, America is one of the largest consuming com countries in the world. So that's making a lot of tra trailers bulge, you know what I'm saying? And, in a good sense, you know what I'm saying? Um, there's always freight, there always will be freight um, as long as there's highways out there. Um, so for our people, um, you know, we've been conditioned to work for money, you know, and this is an industry where you can allow your money work for you. And we have to uh, talk about it. Like we have to bring more awareness to this industry because um, it's a lot of things that you can do. Like I said, I, I was able to publish my books by just being in this industry and being, you know, dedicated and having all money in in this industry. So books could be anything. Books can be sneakers. Books can be diapers. Books can be whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, so there's a lot of opportunity that you can scale in this industry. And I'm just here to expose my people to that. So um are there any uh, questions from, from the audience uh, before we uh, close out? Uh, what's going on, Slay? I know I'm late. I apologize, but I do want to know. Um, I know I probably don't miss that whole little run through, but I wanted to know, like, kind of get like just a quick little summary of exactly what ground up distribution was, bro. I just hopped in, so I do apologize again. For sure. Um, appreciate that question. So Ground Up Distribution, um, we're a freight management company. Um, we focus on three things uh, specifically. Uh, the first one is dispatching. That's what we do now. We have uh, over six um, contracts where we're working with independent truck drivers who's uh, not necessarily working with a company, but just working independently with our company to, to get their freight. Um, and we have uh, people who come in and dispatch through our company. So like, if you want to be a dispatcher and you take our course and you get our certification, then we essentially create like an affiliate program where um, people call in through, hey, you know, I need a dispatcher. We putting you on um, kind of like in a waiting list, like. Um, hey, here's this guy and we lining you up with a driver. Um, drivers like that because if they work with a big company, like let's just say FedEx, they got to do FedEx loads. You know what I mean? And a lot of these companies have drivers out three to four time, three to four weeks at a time. Um, whereas like one of my guys who's out on the road now, he need to be home by Thursday. Um, so I'm able to get him loads that can have him home by Thursday. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that get like, as a, as a truck driver, they rather work with somebody independent as opposed to working with a big time company. That's just going to kind of, you know, slave them in a sense. Um, and our other main focus is education. Um, and education is just like, um, making sure you as sharp as a Titan when you come into this game. You know what I mean? I make sure that my students is as sharp as a whistle when they come in because, you know, you're dealing with guys who've been on the road for 30 years, um, 40 years, and they just uh, really don't have time, honestly, for, for rookie mistakes um, because they trying to get that bag. And, you know what I'm saying? They, they focus, you know, and they just need somebody on a level who understands 
all the different intricates that go down on them highways. Um, and then the last, the last thing that we focus on is brokering. Um, that's what we graduate into. That's what we really uh, talk about at this conference big time in Knoxville is what a broker is um, and how you can work with ground up distribution as a broker and what that means, what that would mean for your pockets, for your portfolio, um, et cetera. And so those are the three main things that we focus on at, at ground up distribution. And then, um, like, give them the prices and everything for the for the uh, conference, just in case they wanted to come. Okay, for sure. So, so what I do is um, I just take us to the ground up distribution page. So um, you just come here to ground up distribution, and you go to the Good Conference 2021, and we have it to where. Um, you can actually make a down payment on the different prices. Um, so this is just like the general ticket. This gives you access to the events that we'll be hosting, um, our breakout sessions. Um, and it also gives you a two night stay at the Hilton Garden in Knoxville. That's where we will be having the conference at. So you would just go here and you could pay the full amount, which is 7-Eleven, or you could put the down payment and pay the rest um, at the, at the conference. And so um, some of the things that we're gonna be talking about, um, we actually have Gary, he's gonna be coming on. We're gonna, he has his podcast, The Art of Hustle. Um, so that Saturday, we're gonna be doing chops, like kind of like how we doing tonight and um, just building, like kind of just talking about like these gateways that where we can uh, enter the market, um, et cetera. So we got that package. Um, I kind of cut it off, but there's a um, package on there for vendors. Like if you have a vendor, if you have t-shirts or if you have a service or a product, you can come and just be a vendor. Um, if you know anybody that's a vendor, um, you could tell them they could come out. Um, they get with their package. Um, again, that's on that website, groundupdistribution.com slash good conference. Uh, they can come up there and pay the, the price and they have access to the hotel rooms um, as well. And, you know, um, that's that's kind of what, what the premise of, of the conference is. Um, and, you know, how you guys can go on there and, and support, you know, we, it's like I said, this is really, ground up distribution is the future of transportation. Um, you know, like I said, I've been doing, I've, I do a lot of fighting for our people, you know, just, you know, behind these, um, closed doors, you know, in this, in this market. Um, so my, my biggest reason for, um, creating this platform was for our people to come in, um, get another stream of revenue that they can add to their income stream. They said, um, everybody needs at least nine streams of income. So why not add transportation to one of those nine? You feel what I'm saying? And, um, like I said, I just been, um, doing a lot of uh, activism fight on the in, the in the industry to make sure that we have the proper solutions needed to make sure that the driver's uh, trips run smoothly and that they treat it the right way and paid the right way. And on the flip end, our people is able to um, create generational wealth, you know, for their families and stuff like that. So. Um, is there any other questions? All right. Um, so one of my team members is here. I don't know if she's able to speak right now, but um, Bravo, if you wanted to come up and uh, introduce yourself and just kind of talk about your experience, if you um, if you want. Hey, yeah, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so I took the course um, and honestly, truly, I didn't know Daryl from a can of paint. Like <laughs> um, I had, um, I was on Instagram and 
I met Gero through a mutual friend. His name is Wu. I'm not too sure if any of y'all are familiar with him. But they were, um, like, it was like a mastermind. I forget what it was at the time. But um, it was just, you know, what he was speaking, what they were talking on at the, at the moment. And I was like, yeah, I got to go add him or whatever. And then when I added him, that's when I saw that he was, um, you know, uh, was actually about to start teaching the class, the dispatching class. Um, I had been looking into trucking, like, um, just kind of getting my foot into the door, but, um, had really no idea where to even start with it, honestly. So when I saw that he was offering the course, I was like, you know what, let me see what it's about. Let me see what's going on with it. And honestly, I'm not even gonna lie because it was like a, like a six week course or something like that. It was like every other weekend. Uh, I didn't join the first week because I was still kind of he- kind of hesitant because I was just it was just me just playing around just seeing if I was gonna like what I was gonna do, but once I finally decided to actually join or whatever I caught up, um, and it's like I'm glad I, I did it because it's it's very profitable it's been very lucrative, um, and even like uh, before before literally like three weeks ago I was working from home. Um, so I got my certification on Christmas after taking the course. Um, and I was able at the time I was, when I was still at home, I was dispatching actually for three drivers while still working my full-time job. So it's not like it can't be done. Um, it's very doable. You just have to be just really organized, just really on top of everything. Um, Kind of cutting out, Bree. Yeah, so I don't know, but you're passionate about uh, dispatching like your drivers. That's not loving it as well. Um, yeah, I'll return back to the office on the job so I can. Hey, Bravo, you kind of you kind of went in and out, but um, just to kind of chime in on what she was saying, like Bravo did an incredible job with being like she's a example of somebody who literally didn't know anything about trucking and came in and just like became like a rock star like really just dominated dispatching you know took it to the next level um and so that just like it just shows people like they their potential um and like you know me i just I, my got my job is really just to point people to the lake to the lake and it's up on them if they want to go and get the water and and distribute the water, if you will, you know what I'm saying? So um, it's a lot of opportunity for our people in this in this market um, and it's growing um, year over year. Um, and you really just can, like a lot of people now in the um, conversation that's building now is uh, becoming a national and um, being a sovereign and, and things like that. Um, I will say that when you working with these companies, we worked with all of them. Like it's so many, like Bravo could attest, we do so many carrier packets a, a month. You know, we could probably, I can't even count how many packets we go through. But one of the things that they don't ask for is your social security card or your ID. You know what I'm saying? They just want to make sure you got your tax identification number and they checking your MC to make sure that you legit. So for our people who are looking to work outside of the US system and still be have control over the nation, um, transportation is, is, a, is a very great gateway um, for that. And so, um, you know, transportation, I feel like is a remedy for our liberation. And, and I, I'll just end with that. Um, Big shout out to Gary. Um, Gary, I appreciate you taking your time out 
your busy schedule to be here. Uh, I, I appreciate your consciousness and your stream of questions. Um, and we're going we gonna to make this thing rock out in Knoxville. And, you know, uh, I see everybody there. So. Appreciate you too, bro. No doubt. All right, peace, Bree.